This race is a seaside sprint course on this month's Zwift Racing series of Lap It Up. So is seaside sprints the course that is gonna get me my first win? Because I already completed stage one of this Zwift racing series two weeks ago, stage one was the Champs-Élysées. Champs-Élysées! And I died a death trying to keep up with the lead pack due to a three week break from Zwift. Good. Today's ride, I've got three minutes. I'm really late getting on this ride today. Stage three of Lap It Up. It's on the seaside sprint. I've never ridden this course before unless it's part of a bigger course. I have, um, I've never done seaside sprint. It annoyed me that I took this break and it set me back in my ambition to win a Cat D race. I decided to punish myself by riding pretty much every day until I either win or I implode. I'm really hoping it's the first one. This is gonna be absolutely mental. So there's, uh, with three minutes left to go, there's 25 people in it. Um, let me hit record. I'm only racing this because it's part of the series. I've done the first two, so I'm gonna try and see if I can finish this series. I've never finished a series. I don't normally go in for all the hype of a monthly racing series and prefer to choose races as and when I wanna race rather than stick to a series. However, stage two was the Glasgow reverse course. So last week I raced the Glasgow reverse three times. The link for that video is also in the description. Go and have a watch after watching this one as I actually did all right in these three races. Better than the Champs-Élysées race anyway. There's a French side. So now having raced the first two stages and having raced stage two several times and now being 100% fixated on winning my first ever DCAT race, I decided to jump on the bike last week for the first attempt at stage three of the Seaside Sprints. When I say that I'm after my first win in DCAT, I mean my first win across the line. I won a race on Zwift Power several videos ago and ever since I've wanted to be the first rider across the banner in a race. That's the aim. I'm also fixated on winning a mainstream race. If you choose a 60k ride at three o'clock in the morning, then I might win that, especially if I'm the only one to turn up. But that's not my style, and I'm going for my first win in a mainstream Zwift Racing Series race. And I'll keep on racing daily if I have to, until I win. So, is Seaside Sprints the course that is gonna get me my first win? Let's find out. Zwift races can be a bit weird off the start line. Rarely they're calm. Occasionally you get some lunatic attack for no good reason. I've been that lunatic occasionally, so I know it happens. And I'm pleased to say that with the lead pack off the line, no one, including myself, is doing anything silly here. So it's as much as learning the course as racing it. I've no idea what any of the bumps or twists are. So it's as much fun learning new courses as it is racing them. I've been getting over a bit of a chesty cough for the last couple of days. My daughter decided to come home from college with a head cold and cough and give it to me. I now find it relatively easy to keep pace now, I never used to, as long as I power into these rollers that I know are coming up, then eventually everything will calm down and we can get onto concentrating on getting to the end in one piece. Unfortunately, as we go into the rollers, two riders have pushed off the front and they have managed to get a very, very small gap. I know that if I'm gonna win one of these races, then I can't allow a small lead group to form and I'm now at risk of getting dropped for good and also for no good reason as well, because we're very close to the start. So I'll make my way up to the strung out group using the draft of those around me and I'll eventually get back on to the front group without any major issue, but I did use watts I didn't really need to burn. Okay, these rollers 
coming into the final uh, sprint is going to be interesting. Or well, we still, no, we're still in the leading. Oh, I'm getting dropped. While well, talking to camera, I nearly get dropped on a medium bump before what will be the finish line at the end of lap three. We're still in the leading. I do make a mental note of this short climb as it's a few hundred meters from the banner and this is where this race I know now will be won or lost. Just looking at it, I know that. Then as we leave the lead in and into lap one, one of the other riders goes for the sprint jersey. Good luck to him. I hope he's puffed out and can't beat me to the finish now. There's a guy that went for the sprint. Good luck to him. Okay, I'm gonna open my window. As I am, starting to get warm and getting dropped. Now everyone seems to be taking this quite easy. Interesting climb. Okay, we're inside the volcano. Um, yeah, haven't been in here for ages. Interestingly, the volcano uh, com race was, I think, one of my first, if not the first ever race I had on Zwift. Yeah, it nearly destroyed me. So it looks like the power-ups are draft. Uh, which is where it makes the avatars in front of you basically wider, like you're following a van to give you a draft benefit, a bigger draft benefit, probably an easier draft benefit, and then obviously the power-up, which I think makes you 10% lighter. Uh, the featherweight, sorry, which I think, and then obviously the featherweight, which I think makes you 10% lighter. Uh, so I complete most of the first lap, climb into the volcano without getting dropped, and more importantly, without expending loads of energy. We then hit the rollers towards the end of the lap, and these can be a blessing and or a curse for me. They're a good point for me to catch back on if I need to. The way Zwift works, if I power into these rollers, the up part of the rollers, then I get what feels like a slingshot effect back down the other side, helping me to again power into the next roller with less effort. And it happens over and over if there's more than one roller. Okay. So far, so good. Back on the rollers, going back the other way now. So far, so good. So there's 10 of us in this lead group. And then some of these guys look pretty tasty from a sprint perspective, just from what I've seen them do so far. I'm pleased to be in this position and feeling as good as I do, I'm actually starting to get a bit nervous about the finish as I'm like a cat here that's been chasing that squirrel for the past year. And as soon as I get close to it, I get nervous. <laughs> I'm thinking about the sprint. I'm even starting to think about how I'm gonna attack the finish and as we go through the end of lap one, this is a new feeling for me. The feeling of confidence and tactical advantage because I'm still feeling quite good. Now, remembering this big bump from the lead in, I start to get worried that A, they're gonna start pushing, or B, someone goes for a break and I can't react quick enough, eventually getting dropped. So I push harder than I probably need to, just to ensure I can react if I have to. I just move closer to the front. I'd rather spend a few extra watts to get to the front than conserve energy at the back 
and have to sprint uphill to catch the brake. I already know this smallest climb is gonna be absolutely crucial in this race. I also remember to keep on the power until I crest the climb and gravity kicks in. If I rest too soon, then I risk being dropped and losing momentum. Now that I know this descent peaks at minus 6%, I can let my weight and gravity help me catch on to the riders that have pushed off the front because I didn't relax on the climb. I'm now in a position to comfortably catch the lead riders. Another sprinter, as you do. So that's gonna be an interesting sprint finish on the flats. Three riders that were with us for this race so far have now been dropped. They've been dropped off the back because of that punchy climb. Forgot to use my boost. Too busy thinking about the end of the race. So they now have to burn matches that they probably don't have to catch on or stay dropped. So three riders push off the front on the flats. Knowing there's a downhill section, I decide, mainly because I feel okay, to then try and bridge the gap and hope that no one comes with me. Okay, these guys are starting to push at the front. I can't have that. And eventually, with a lot of effort, I make it back onto the lead group, and now it's just four of us going into the volcano for the second time. This is looking really, really good. Interestingly, one of the drop riders then does some really big numbers to bridge the gap between them and us, dragging everyone else with them. Fair play to them, they did really well here, but this now means our lead pack has unfortunately grown from four to seven. I've just got to hope that there's nothing left for the sprint from those that were chasing us. I then probably pushed too hard into the volcano climb, only because I expected everyone else to, but they didn't. I also then used my draft boost for some strange reason in the wrong place. I'm aware of this. Okay, the fan's gone on. Interestingly, we've managed to drop three people off of this pack, so we've gone from 10 to seven, uh, which is good. The fan probably should have gone on a lot sooner than it did. <laughs> now the question is, am I gonna wait for the sprint? I'll try and go for a breakaway. So you know I'm feeling incredibly confident if I'm thinking about tactics. I might wait for the sprint. With a lap still to go. Fancy practicing the high RPM tips. Rather than grind out a sprint, try and go for a lower gear, higher RPM. I've been trying to work on my higher RPM sprints and I decided to try and use this race to give it a go. See, normally in races, I don't get to a position where I'm able to then sprint and think about RPM. Normally at this point in the race, I'm just holding on for dear life and hoping it ends soon. So to be in a position to think about this was a real novelty. My plan is to steadily increase my gears up to and not exceeding gear 17 and then try and rotate my legs faster than I normally do. That's what I'm thinking about now, that's the plan. Okay, last lap. I wonder what everyone's gonna do. I normally sprint in gear 19 or 20, so dropping it to 17 and trying to sprint faster, I'm hoping will help my sprint. We'd be interested to see what everyone does on a volcano. I might just get up it rather than power up it. As we enter the volcano for the last time, my heart rate is very good. Okay, here we go. I've controlled this race really well, and if no one pushes, then they're making a huge mistake because there's no way they're gonna drop me 
over the rollers, feeling the way I feel right now. There is one rider in this lead group named A Pinlack, I think I've got that right, that I've noticed has raced this race really well. He's been yeah, dominant, yeah. drafted well, and occasionally shown some strong watts, possibly showing his hand a little bit too early here. I think he's gonna be one to watch on the sprint section at the end of this race. Everyone else seems knackered and desperately holding on to the lead pack, which is giving me confidence. And that's it, we made it to the top of the volcano. My heart rate is high as much from the knowledge that there is nothing anyone can do now to drop me, now we're up the volcano, as it is because of the knowledge that this race for the first time is probably gonna come down. That'll do, that'll do pig. To a sprint. I haven't said that for a, I don't think I've ever said that before. Another draft boost. I didn't get the feather once. I'm gonna get this opportunity to sprint for first place. I really wanted that feather for the final bump, but I'm gonna save the draft that I've got here for the sprint. Okay, just over 3K. Everyone, everyone's played it so cagey. Oh, I think someone's just disconnected. There's a guy here with a Tron bike and flame socks. So, yeah, be interested to see what he's up to. Then there was some kind of glitch in the matrix where a rider appeared on the hub five seconds ahead of us. This really confused me. I tried to ignore it, which worked, as this had no bearing on the race, other than just to confuse me for a second. Is there a ghost in this? Because there's a guy, he's just popped up five seconds ahead. What? What was that? I don't know what that was. As we come down from that last roller and into the final bump, I make sure to put down enough power to ensure that I don't get dropped, but not too much that I go to the front. I need to sprint from at least mid-pack, if not the back, to get the most from my power up and the benefit from my weight on the descent. There's no point me being at the front for this. I will also just really quickly say for anyone listening on headphones, scream warning incoming. Here goes nothing. My first real proper 100% legit attempt at a peak race sprint finish. Let's fucking do this. I am very sorry about my scream. I could have edited it out, but I really didn't want to because this felt like a win. And in case you didn't realize, as this celebration did seem like I thought I'd won, I know I didn't win. This was by far my best sprint and I beat everyone except for the Tron Fire Sox guy, who I knew had a tasty sprint from some of the other sections he had done on this route. He only just beat me. 
I nailed my tactics, I stayed disciplined, and I executed what I decided to do early on in the race. I am very, very happy with this result, as you can probably tell from my celebration. Yes! Yes! I am one step closer to that first across the banner win. And if I keep sprinting like this, improving my sprints like this, then it's only a matter of time until I'm winning a lot more races. Thank you for watching this video. I have many, many races incoming. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. See you in the next one. This was a really good video. Second place, but that sprint, whoa, baby. Check me out. Oh my God, oh, that was good. What a race. What a race.